For those of you who don't know, I'm Josh. I'm the president of Manchester Medical Research Student Site this year. I know from my experience, when I decided to integrate, I did a, a research project as part of an anatomical sciences degree. And that sort of fueled my ambition to pursue a career in academic medicine. Um, you've probably heard that foundation process applications have been open this year for final years. And I chose to apply for the academic one. And as part of that, you have to answer white space questions. Um, why research? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? And I was reading it before today, just before I submitted it, knowing that was going to this lecture. And every point that I made stemmed from my BSc installation. And depending on how successful it is, and how interesting you find it, and how motivated you are during that year, have a real effect on what you do in clinical years. And one of the answers I used was that reading anatomical sciences as a BSc gave me an evidence-based lens when practicing um, and learning as an undergraduate clinician in third, fourth and fifth year. And it really does make you understand um, the process of evidence-based medicine and, and why we do it and the translation from uh, bench to bedside, so from test tube to patient. So hopefully tonight, um, everyone that's present has asked themselves this question, integration, is it for me? Well, I, I definitely support changing the title of it. Why isn't it for me? So, hi everybody, uh, thanks to the uh, MMR of SOC for having me. I actually volunteered when I found out about the event because I thought I've been through this journey and it's really uh, shaped my future. So I thought I'd come explain to you how making that decision to intercalate has really changed like the way I view medicine and my career and where I want to go in the end. Uh, so I'll introduce my, my name is uh, Majid Ahmed and uh, I'm currently a British Heart Foundation Clinical Research Fellow. Um, employed by the University of Manchester, just started. It's basically a fancy way of saying they pay me to do a PhD. Um, that, that's basically the fancy way of saying it, yeah. Uh, so I'm in my first year and I've just started. I'm here today to talk to you about integration. What is it like and why do it? Yeah, there's a bit of fancy graphics. <laughs> well, I'll actually tell you the story. What it was is I made this presentation for, I did it about a month ago for some school kids about why to apply for medicine. And so it was very kind of kiddish a little bit and I quickly adapted it because I only got in touch two days ago. So I do apologise a little bit. So I started my studies in 2008 and I only graduated in July this year. A little uh, dorky picture of me there, uh, graduating. And I integrated between my fourth and my fifth year. Um, and I studied a master's in research in cardiovascular health and disease. Um, it was here in Manchester, um, and now, currently, as I've said, I'm a clinical research fellow as, uh, at the University of Manchester. Um, so you might spot a little uh, Vermont there, which is uh, a place in uh, what's a state in uh, America. Uh, and in a couple of weeks, I'll be jet setting off to Vermont uh, as part of my PhD. I'll be out there for a year um, learning. Um, this technique, which I might describe later if I have time, and then I'll be bringing that back to Manchester to do that here in Manchester. <laughs> so why would you want to integrate now? I was going to cover this very a little bit in depth, but um, Dr. Ashley has actually covered the main points, and I was just going to repeat what she's um, already said to you. So it's just adding to your um, CV, uh, raising your profile out there, um, giving you chances for publications and post presentation, gaining an insight and experience in research or the field that you want to study, be it neuroscience, anatomy, or, or, or whatever it is you're wanting to cover. Um, improve your application for foundation jobs. I'll talk a little bit about that as well, tell you how, I, uh, how it really boosted my chances. Um, advance your knowledge of a specialist area. Um, experience and learn a whole variety of skills. Um, there's things that I never thought I would have done. Um, which integrating has, has led me on to do so. Right now I'm, I'm trained uh, with a home office license to handle animals. So I work with mice and rats. Um, I work with them every day and a lot of researchers do that. It's something that's quite common. Um, and I, I work with their blood vessels. So that's something that you have to learn the legislation. You have to go on a course, uh, pass, pass this test and get your home office license. And then there's like, if I, con if I contradict that license or anything, I can face potentially five years imprisonment. Um, I've done surgery on a rat, which is amazing, um, absolutely amazing, and the rat actually uh, died on the table, um, and I did, no, 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 very I did CPR and it came back to life, <laughs> honestly, I'm not lying, most amazing experience ever, honestly, I'm not lying, so, it does really open up the doors to different things that you can do, um, and it's also a year out of medicine, um, I love being a student, and that's why I've just started, signed up to be another student for another three years. Um, 
you know, pay council tax and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so, uh, might not be another student for another year. And I just put those up there just to show that there's a whole host of other reasons why you might want to intercalate and, and that's personal between you to, to figure that out. <laughs> so how did I decide I wanted to intercalate? Well, I quite, kind of knew quite early on, I mean, it's, it's um, etched into you from when you apply that, oh, there's this option that you can intercalate and you come to these talks like this and everyone, it, it, it's drummed into you quite early on. So I knew quite early on that, oh, actually there's this option there and I probably will want to do it. So from my second year, I think, uh, of medicine, I got a part-time job and I started working to save up money. Um, to integrate between my fourth year, and I've actually not been on holiday since 2008. Uh, it's true, true story. Uh, not been on holiday, but I've been rewarded now, haven't I? <laughs> um, and that was just to save money um, to, to fund my uh, postgraduate qualification. Um, so I know I was particularly interested in cardiovascular health and disease. I knew that was for me, but I also was thinking about other things. What, what else do I maybe want to do? And um, I decided that healthcare ethics and law was one that I wanted to apply to and I did apply in the end and I did successfully get a place but I uh, decided to go with my original uh, preference. So the course con content and the structure is a big thing which should uh, be kind of affecting your decision to do it. Find out about the course, find out what you're going to actually be doing. It's going to be a year um, that you're going to be spending on this course so uh, it's definitely worth putting the research in to find out. You don't want to do it, spend all that time, get all that money, take that time out and then decide that you don't like the course. Um, also funding, we've heard a lot of questions about funding, uh, it costs a lot of money um, and it's definitely something you should be thinking about. Um, I'd say don't let the finance hold you back, there are loans that you can get, there are scholarships that you can get, there's, there's so many things and it's definitely be worth paying that little bit extra while you're already a medical student to get that qualification and boost your CV for the future uh, when you come to apply for um, maybe academic posts or even just specialty posts, where if you're going to be a surgeon or something like that, it's definitely going to help a lot more. Um, there's a lot of scholarships available as part of the University of Manchester. So I did the MRES. I think the tuition fee at the time was six thousand, um, and the you do get some scholarship if you do the MRES if, if they are successful in getting that award. So I think we got like two thousand each, so it dropped down to four thousand, and then. Um, Dr. Rassie, you did say that the NHS bursary doesn't cover the MRES. Is that right? The, 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 the in general. Okay, well, I may have got away with getting some funding then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, just double check that because I'm not too sure on that. It, it might have paid for the actual component of the MRES. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting a lot of money anyway from the NHS bursary. I'll just say that. They, uh, they pay the original amount of yeah. fees for your medical. Degree. So if your fees are 9,000, then uh, they might be able to yeah, pay. Yeah, so that's, cor that's correct there. So I had 4,000 left to pay, and they'll pay 3,000 whatever, which was my original um, tuition fee, and then I have to make up that rest, that couple of hundred or thousand or whatever. Um, and then you, you don't let student finance tell you that um, you can't get any any maintenance loan or anything because you should really just keep, keep shouting down at the phone with them, and uh, you are entitled to a maintenance loan. It's like £2,000 or something, uh, but something is better than nothing. So it's not going to fund you for the full year, but it'll, it'll help get you through. So definitely speak to them. The other thing while I'm on NHS bursaries is they have some, I think they're based in Bolton. Um, it's like an 0162 number or something. But if, if you ring them, there's no um, premium call charges. They don't make you wait on the phone for ages and stuff like that. So if you've got any questions, just give them a call and speak to them. The, the, the sort of people, they're from Bolton, so, you know, they're really common. They're not, they're not really posh or anything. <laughs> um, and finally, I met with the course directors that I wanted to apply with, um, and they, they were really helpful. They sat down with me. Uh, they said, okay, why do you want to do it? And I, I said to them, look, I, I don't really know what research is. I'd, I've never really done any research. I don't know what it is. I want to find out. I, that's just me being honest there. And you'd think, oh, maybe they don't want to take you on if you don't know what research is, but they actually, that, that's what the Masters is there for, to give you a flavour of what it's about, or, or, or the BSE, or any other um, course for that, for that matter. So don't be afraid to say that you're doing it to get a flavour of uh, that course. So Bachelors or Masters, which has uh, come up a little bit as well, and I'll cover it very briefly. Um, so the bachelor's is usually 10 to 12 months. I think most of them are about a year now, actually. Um, it's university-based, uh, if, well, if you're doing it here anyway. And the emphasis is a lot on acquiring and understanding the theory. And it might not be just textbook theory, but it can also be current research theory as well. 
you do a small research project at the end with a dissertation um, and on your foundation applications you can get between one to four points depending on how well you do on it so if you get a first class with honours it's four points and if you get a third class I think something it's like uh, one point so uh, bear that in mind with the MRES it's a full year um, <coughs> literally is a full year you start in September and you finish like a week before you go back into fifth year if you do it between fourth and fifth so you get like a week off uh, which is tough, but I mean, it's, it's it's not too bad if you play if if you if you're not like me and leave your dissertation at last minute, then you can hand it in early and then you can have the whole summer to yourself. So it depends how you want to work. I just enjoyed the summer when the summer was out and decided to work a bit later. Um, so yeah, and it's primarily research focus. Uh, again, you'll be based in the university, or unless you're doing a clinical project, where you might be based in the hospital. Um, so I had a colleague who went down to Rivenshorms. They're looking at uh, MR images and um, etc. Uh, so it depends what kind of research project you take on. There's a mixture of practical seminars, tutorials, presentations, and your dissertation project. And on a foundation application, it counts as four points. That's it. Doesn't matter what uh, level you pass at, uh, as long as you get the masters, you get the four points. Um, but yeah, a distinction or just a pass, it's still four points. Uh, so how did I find the MRES? Um, it was very different to medicine uh, in a structure. Um, medicine is more of a vocation, so you learn what you need to learn, and you go into the clinic clinics, and it's very um, self-dependent. Uh, in the MRES, it's very much more like other academic programs. So you have your seminars, you have your tutorial, you have these credits, and um, all sorts. And it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But it's not difficult. You're all here, you're all medical students, you're all intelligent. So I'm sure you'll be fine with that. I hope you're all intelligent anyway. Um, it's in-depth scientific engagement and it's constantly challenging. And I like that. I, when I look back to when I was younger and I used to do science, I used to love the experiments that we used to do. I used to love the dissections that we used to do uh, in school. And that was something that I'm, I'm really science uh, motivated in. When I got into medicine, you kind of sometimes you lose that science a little bit. It comes more about communication, and uh, not saying that it's not important, um, definitely important. But there's a diff definitely a difference between a clinician and a scientist. It's a good mixture of different topics are covered. There's different methods of learning, as I've already explained, and it takes a little while to get used to, but with feed feedback, you quickly improve. So, for example, my first seminar assignment, I got marked, and it was 51 percent. And I was gutted with that. I think it's just over a pass or something. I was, I was absolutely gutted because I'm, I like to be a high achiever and I'm sure most of you guys do. <coughs> um, so I went to go see my supervisor and I said, oh, what am I doing wrong here? And they gave me some feedback. I was using more textbooks than research papers and it's in Masters of Research. So you should use research, obviously. Things that you might not know as a medical student. You don't really do these assignments uh, a lot as medical students. So with feedback, I found that I quickly improved. I did actually, in the end, graduate with a distinction, so it is possible to start at the bottom and work your way up. Um, I enjoy the practical aspect a lot. Uh, you do practicals and I enjoy uh, the practical, doing cell culture, doing experiments and, and working with mice and um, different animals, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so lastly, I just want to talk about, so this is the last slide, um, may I'll be nearly done. Just going to talk about a bit about academic medicine. So I've decided that I definitely want to go into academic medicine. And, and if I did an intercalate and do the MRES, I wouldn't have known that. Um, doing the doing the MRES really it sparked a passion in me. Uh, I knew that. Hang on, I really like this, and, and it's constantly challenging me. It's giving me a variety, and it's letting me choose what I want to focus on. So uh, I actually did try to convert my MRES into a PhD uh, at the time. But that didn't go to plan just because of the tight deadlines. Um, so what I did was I went back into fifth year. I carried on with my final year. But at the same time, I applied for a grant from the British Art Foundation to do this PhD project that I'm on now. Uh, at the same time as that, I still applied for foundation jobs just in case that didn't come through because I didn't. I, did, I wanted a job to get to at the end. Thankfully, it did come through, and I rejected the job and I went to uh, went for the PhD. Um, uh, so you do five six for academic medicine. Typically, you're going to do five six years at med school. 
then you're going to do two years uh, foundation training or academic foundation training. After that you'll do your ST and then between your ST training you'll usually take three years if you're doing a full-time PhD or six years if you're doing a part-time PhD. You'll take that out, then go back into specialist <coughs> training and then uh, after that you can uh, gain your uh, completion of certificate, certificate of completion training um, which allows you to become a consultant. So academic medicine, why would you want to do it? Well, I won't read all of this, but basically academic medicine is the balance between being a clinician and also being a scientist. Um, so as a clinician, you're treating the patients, you're figuring out how, um, what's wrong with them, diagnosing them and treating them. But on the other side of it, as a scientist, you're thinking about it, going away and thinking about it, and thinking, all right, well, what is actually happening here? And so I work, I, I work with obesity and hypertension. That's what I like looking at. So when people become fat, they become hypertensive and they become diabetic. And why does that happen? We don't really know. It's just something that we take for granted that, okay, you're fat, so you're gonna eat, you're, that's why you're hypertensive. Um, so I like looking at that and looking at, well, what actually happens? And we look at different mechanisms of uh, how the fat can affect um, blood vessel regulation, the opening and closing of blood vessels, and what mechanisms um, become dysfunctional in, in that process. So that's what I like looking at. and. As a clinician, what you'll do is you'll spend half your time in the clinics and in the, in, in the hospital, and then half your time you'll spend in the lab doing your research. And you get still you get still get paid the same amount, um, which is great. So right now I'm doing a PhD, and I'm getting paid exactly the same as I would if I was doing a foundation job, without all the nasty, uh, you know, nights and everything like that. Um, but it, it, it's great in that sense. So you're not going to be disadvantaged by not choosing to do an academic route. I'll just point out that there's a medical careers website there, uh, which is, um, I think, maintained by the NHS. Um, and there's also a journal at the bottom there. If any of you are interested in academic medicine, I'd encourage you to take those sources out. Uh, and um, they are actually a, a, a good read. So finally, uh, I'd like to take any questions or with the, any, with the other students. And I'd like to thank you for listening. And just briefly thank uh, Manchester for having me for... Uh, six years uh, and having me for another three and also thank the British Art Foundation as well. So what we're going to do is everyone is going to say what they interpolated in and what they did. Uh, so I'm Dina, I interpolated in between third and fourth year and I did an MRS in medical sciences. Uh, my project was very much clinical. So I looked at schizophrenia and developing an assessment tool to help sort of predict relapse in patients. So that's what I spent my year doing. We don't, we don't. <laughs> hey, so I'm Jack. I did the Global Health Bachelor's last year. Uh, it's incredible. I kind of went into it because I thought it sounded right. I'm not even unbelievably passionate about all the world. Um, it really grounds you up. You get to see health from like a new perspective, and you basically get a one-year crash course in like politics, sociology, anthropology, economics, like loads of extra things that will be part of your career uh, that surrounds the actually taking care of patients. But um, and my dissertation was um, the turtles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 it was basically: is there any benefit to um, infant male circ routine infant male circumcision? Uh, which I found no. And so I looked at um, the USA as a case study of how and um, applied some social theories as to how we might be able to get them to stop doing it, basically. Hello, everyone. I'm Kim. Um, I interviewed in health management and I did it externally at Indian Um And my dissertation uh, was on um, something called for health innovation. So I did nothing science, you know, or no lab before I yet. Um, I'm Omar, um, I integrated the Masters in Public Health with Global Health and Emergency Management Assistance between my third and fourth year. Um, that's basically, imagine everything you've heard here, plus more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the degree is online, so you could literally spend your time in Canada, in Africa, you can go anywhere. You could go do it alongside a decent internet connection. My dissertation was on um, the link between green space and obesity, so if you have a partner in your house, are you less likely to be fat? <laughs> anyone have questions for anyone? Is there a disadvantage to doing it after fourth year compared to third year? Um, well, I. I obviously I'm in third year now, so I can't speak personally. But I see some of the people I did global health with who are now in fifth year around Salford. And um, like they said, the first few weeks was kind of tough getting heads back into the clinical setting. 
but I've, I saw three of them today, and they're saying they're, find, they're finding fifth year hard, but only as hard as everyone else is. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, deciding it between fourth and fifth year. I think it, it is a bit tough because you go back and you've not done anything for a year, and you have that feeling, you know, I was in a GP stage, and the GP asked me to do that exam. And you get that feeling again, you know, where you get hot and you start sweating, and you don't know what you're doing. So I, I did have that, that feeling again. You just put your head back in the books a little bit. Uh, you don't need to do it that... You get, you get you're sweating these finals anyway, so you're going to be revising. And um, I think the stats actually show that the people who interplay and come back actually do better in the finals um, than, than other post projects. I think the very numbers of people that will actually fail, finals are very, very low. So don't let it put you off. It just needs a little bit of extra work. But if you're, if you're into playing, then you should be expecting that. Right, you know. The only disadvantage I'd say, that you've mentioned this, is you might be writing your dissertation whilst you, you, you're back in medicine. But that will only be for about a week. And you don't really get a holiday. So. And if you get it back there, it's not. Yeah, um, ideally. But I think it, with research, it's sort of, you can't really predict when you finish. After you have the intention of starting again, then you delay and delay. Yeah, and, and you never yeah. finish it. My <laughs> first main chapter took about three times longer than I thought it was going to, and I had to write six and a half thousand words in the last four days. <laughs> I didn't sleep on the Wednesday morning until Friday afternoon time, which was that four and a half thousand It does become a pretty good, and that's research, it happens. Yeah. Now, so. But you'll be used to that. Right? Um. So uh, what process did you go through in terms of choosing what you wanted to integrate in? Uh, well, I, I personally didn't want to do a science, so really I didn't want to choose that like, we like, couldn't use it for my Because like, some of my friends did things like this, they doing things like online, stuff like that. And I didn't really think it was but for my friends, that kind of thing. And also, it's just as much as the group situation, and it's definitely the right thing that just makes it easier. Um, but and also, it's because it was going to be the university, and I was on some level, I got to get underrated as well. I mean, for me, I was a bit like if I wanted to do a life science degree, I would come to uni and do a life science degree. And I'm not that there's any disrespect to people who want to integrate in life sciences, but I wanted to, the whole point of me of taking a year out was to add another string to my bow and do something different for a year. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm looking at, I'm not on the night grand bachelor's fee, so it would have been a big jump up for me to pay for a master's. And I was like, I'm quite happy doing the bachelor's because I'll sound interesting and read a bit more about it and thought it sounded really good, so, yeah. For me, I definitely knew I wanted to do research, but I wasn't sure, I mean, the cardiovascular one was very specific, but we've got oncology as well, so I, I sort of wanted to do something a bit different that wasn't so specific. So I did medical sciences, and that's very flexible, so you can contact your own supervisors or sort of pick your own project really. So the six institutes in Manchester, and I contact with the brain behaviour, mental health, disease, and the nervous system. Took it from there, really. I mean, I think there is, there is a flavour of everything. Um, so the medical sciences one. I think the cardiovascular health disease is actually a master's in medical sciences. I mean, they put cardiovascular health disease in brackets. So it is practically the same degree. They just kind of tailor the program. Um, so you're specialising in a certain area. So I think there's maternal and fetal health as well or something, which I'm not sure if that's medical sciences as well and maternal and that So depending on what you want, if you know that you're interested in a certain specific niche area, then go for that one. If not, then keep it broad and then give yourself the option of choosing once you're actually on the course of what you want to do. You can have a look at the research projects and the titles and go meet a few people and that as well. Um, so, yeah, know yourself as well. You know what you want to do and what you're really passionate about. And I think a second what Dr. Asti said as well is that there's nothing more important than doing something that you enjoy doing. Because um, that's where you're going to have the motivation to get in and spend that little bit extra time in the lab or writing up or whatever you're doing. So definitely do whatever you enjoy doing. I knew I, mean, I was bad at lab stuff. I had to do my A-Labs chemistry from practice and stuff. I knew I couldn't get into the lab. And then I think I... Um, I went through the degrees one by one, I couldn't really find anything interesting, but then I went to blurb to each of them, and then the public health one sounded interesting, but then I thought public health sounds boring. So, um, so I kept researching, kept reading about it, and I thought, actually, no, the public health is interesting. And then I, let, I looked at the modules, and actually, well, the modules, one of them was run by now, so I thought, but honestly, but one of them was the medicine, and I got assistance, and I keep like, telling you to write now, and get people like, um, 
the kind of stuff on the real affirmations and the HR teaching you and the philosophy. Um, and yeah, all kinds of health economics and different topics which I thought were really interesting. So, um, and also the other thing was that one, it opens the door for you to research, you, you learn off research, but then it also opens the door for management as well. And, um, it's quite a really important for us related to medicine, so it kind of opens the door to anything. And I kind of call it like, it's like an MBA, it's like a classroom term, so it's like an MBA for kind of health care. It's, it's respectful of international law as well. So it's good for the other Also, if you do want to do research uh, or do an MBA, don't think you have to do a lab based project. There are clinical projects that you should do. How strong are the opportunities for publication in BSC with investment and that? Well, I don't know comparisons, but I know certainly for how I'm working on getting my publication, so at the moment like, I've got 13,000 participations at home, it's my own original research, and even though it's like desk-based desk -based research, it's still within the World Health Club, there's lots of journals that want to, well, hopefully <laughs> want to publish what I've written, um, and the support within the, the HCRI, the department that World Health is based in, the support is brilliant, they have a lot of links, and then um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, if you're looking to get a publication, don't be put off by the BSC. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea. I think a lot of people actually do think it's easier to get one because everyone has a test project. Um, and also your supervisors really want to get published as well, so I think it's easier to get one published because you'll have your name and your name. And that's a good way to do it. In terms of public accounts, they do a lot of research. Research all the time, so it's very good. Just because you do an MRS doesn't mean you get a publication. It really does depend on your supervisor and your project. Uh, I'm quite lucky, so I'm writing two papers at the moment. But mine, mine was quite a big project. I just the team and the work on it. But more important than publications, I think, is sort of the connections that you make. So <coughs> if you don't get a sort of paper, you can still speak to your supervisor and they'll guide you. And you can write an article or just smaller things. I definitely second that there. Um, so I, I didn't get a publication for my res, but uh, I think I still did fine. Um, don't go into the MRES thinking that you can definitely get a publication because publication in August and you have to have your foundation job application by November or October or something. So are you really going to go to get a publication two months while you're studying for finals? So if you want to get a publication, then focus more on the project options. Uh, then definitely try to get that published rather than something that you're going to be doing. I mean, you, it, in the Emirates, you do have a literature review earlier on in the year in January. So if you do want to then work really hard at that and get that published, but don't just do it just for a publication. And like I said, you'd be better off focusing on getting your project option uh, published rather than doing an Emirates and trying to get it published in a year. Also, the other thing is some of the research that you might be doing might be quite confidential or. Uh, the supervisor might not want to let that information out yet because they that's protected information and this is the university has IP for that. So they're not just gonna let you publish it if they don't want you to. Uh, if it's part of a bigger paper. So just to understand that it's about work, working with people, but the connections that you get are definitely amazing. Yeah, you can play clever as well, so I don't know about the members, but say maybe public health can pick any topic you like. So why did it with my topic? I've got like a big systematic review at the beginning of my dissertation and then the action was at the end as well. So I've kind of two papers, so I can publish them separately. So first time to publish them. Yeah, that's on the BSC Global Health, that's how they tell you you have to use this stage basic and a lit review chapter and then a case study chapter. So yeah, I could probably get two publications if I could try that at one station. So the lady that works on the burial, sorry, I didn't say her name. Um, I just wondered how you found out about the course that you did, and was a place to go for that. I mean, we're told a lot about the courses that are in Manchester, but I think sometimes we don't get maybe information about courses that are in this. Um, well, for the medical perspective, like, I was actually told by my phone, but um, I look at like, all the universities that do medical that have medical school, they're like, the courses they do. And um, some of the universities don't accept external students, so you have to, you can kind of narrow down and find that. And the ones that do, you have to look at what is it offered at Manchester. So it's quite easy to look to the results that you go through and look at them. Because a lot of universities don't have that many courses for BSC. Uh, like, for example, the main ones that do it, for example, Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, UCL, they all have to get at that uni. So they offer a lot more courses on um, obstacles, whereas 
you still don't get that extent of thinking like the first one and um and you can look at people from Newcastle or Longwood University they offer um things of GFC and you can just look at the same of the Manchester. So it won't take you long to just go to the GFC website and see just like how Manchester website has got a lot of information about the GFC that offers you can pay the rest of the time to see what they offer or get a mindset that they can try. May I just in there? There is a, a website and, uh, called something like Integration UK which has the list of all courses that other institutions have. Just like the other day, in, we were in PBL, and someone mentioned that why is it that people from poor backgrounds can have worse health? And I started banging out the uh, Social Determinants of Health, which is this big world organisation agenda that's been around for like a decade and really explains in detail why being from poor backgrounds has a detrimental effect on your health. Um, and you know, it's something that you're never going to hear about in the medicine course, but actually, it's quite a useful thing to know about. In the context of clinical medicine. Thank you. 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 And we had the entire module with NICE. I don't understand how NICE actually do their guidelines, how they set them, how they work, and everything. Um, you also make loads of connections, especially with the emergency and humanitarian systems, where um, you kind of meet people from all over the world. And, and actually, the course, because it's online, people from all over the place as well. So I've been actually working with um, a group in Somaliland who are actually developing our system that's actually helping an actual country develop their health system from scratch, which they don't have that, that few of doctors there in Manchester, in their country. So you get so many opportunities to do those things. Yeah, and just back to the economics of what you're saying, the, the one one core question that kept on coming up again and again in global health is what's the most cost effective way of doing X? And particularly with the rise of things like clinical commissioning groups, to have that background knowledge of how to go about approaching <coughs> that situation, I think is brilliant. So you pick up a lot of transferable skills. Um, so Academic writing, I feel like it's something that you all need. We've um, we have to present a lot of writers, and that's something for me because I couldn't do it before my writers. Like even talking to a few guys, you know, maybe fake or something. But um, it, yeah, so that really helped me. It helps you grow in confidence as well, which is a big thing. I just got straight to be from my English teacher here, and I'm like, I hate writing, but for, 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 for the masses, I have to add to the assignments every five weeks, like four different assignments, you know, uh, 1500 words. Uh, so after a while, you actually get used to it, and now um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually helping, I'm actually might be helping the university actually draft a new kind of global health strategy, so kind of, it actually really helps um, kind of develop those skills which you can kind of use for later on as well. So imagine if you're 50, actually by the time you get to say 60, 70, you'll be forced to retire at 80 or something. So if you don't really want to work as a kind of running around hospital, it's easy to imagine for example. You, you do like a mini and mini and uh, you'll be able to do the whole so. Yeah, I think in the context of this being, sorry, the research society, in the context of this being the research society, I think it's really key the fact that you you don't ever really learn on this and properly how to, um, how to critically analyse research, and you don't really properly learn how to write an essay, not in the same way as you do on like pretty much any other degree, and that's what going into doing the information is. Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm just going to agree with everything they've said. Here. Um, you do get a lot of transferable skills, so you learn about how to critique uh, research, and that's something that you have to do in medicine as well. So um, you might have a piece of research, and then you have to find out what's the strengths, what's the weaknesses. Also, you, you become more curious. So we don't just take things for granted when you read it in a book. You say, okay, so why is that actually? Why do we use this medication? How is that actually work? What is actually come out? And um, the other thing is, it raises your profile. So you just find by telling people that you've got an MRES or you've got BSC that. They actually want to know more, and they they 
kind of give you a bit more credit. So when I went back to Wikipedia, I talked to Reggie's and some specialists, uh, some of the registrars and some of the consultants, and they actually want to find out what you're doing. And they say, oh, well, can you help us with this? Or I kind of get involved because they say, oh, you've taken time out to do a bit more research or education. Or, uh, they, they, they know that you read your little bit. So, so that's good in that sense. Um, the other thing, going back to if you don't want to be doing this job forever and you're going to go hospital, is academic medicine is actually ideal for that because later on you can actually just go into academia fully and you sit in you sit in your office doing reading a computer, <laughs> reading all paper. You've got you've got four or five students working underneath you and they do they do all the research in the lab and uh, we're all just there telling them what to do. So. <laughs> and you're still getting paid for being a consultant. Any other questions? So, I'll just say that I'm actually in the lab across the road in the core technology facility. Uh, I'm here for about two, three weeks. So if anybody does want to do a lot of special interest in cardiovascular disease and wants to come out and check the lab out, then get my email address off the organizers. Um, you'll have to arrange them very quickly, but I'm sure you can come over and have a look and have a little talk with us. Also, about the funding that people were discussing before, uh, the NHS bursary covers you after fourth year for whatever your fees were before. So if you do a master's for, so for me after fourth year, my fees, fees are 3,500, the NHS bursary will cover 3,500 of that. And student finance will cover you for BSc, but not a master's. Right, so thank you all for coming today. Thank you all for speaking as well. Um, if anyone's got any questions that they want to come and ask afterwards, that's fine.